evening and welcome to our grade 8 promotion ceremony. Please stand for our national anthem. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Tonight we honor these 286 students as they conclude their years as middle school students and be in the next phase of life in high school. The class of 2022 is grateful to have you, their parents, teachers, district administration, school committee members, and friends here tonight joining in our celebration. We hope you take the time tonight to be present and mindful. Parents, focus on these fleeting moments. You will soon realize that tonight will quickly turn into high school graduation night, and you can mark your calendars for June 3rd, 2022. Students, enjoy tonight. Take pride in your accomplishments and those of your classmates. Celebrate how much you have learned and grown since you entered middle school. Finally, HCAM is here tonight recording our celebration. Grade 8 students, turn around and give a quick wave. So sit back, relax, and enjoy your night. And now I'd like to welcome the Orange Team teachers to present their academic awards. Mr. and Mrs. Masha are home enjoying their newborn daughter, so I'll be presenting the math award. Bertrand Russell said, mathematics, rightly viewed, possesses not only truth, but supreme beauty. The student who will be receiving the math award has always demonstrated a commitment to mathematical knowledge and a desire to learn from them, their mistakes. Though at times math can be a struggle for both students and teachers alike, this student maintained positive attitudes and sharp wits all year. For these reasons and more, the 2018 Math Award for the Orange Team goes to Samuel Strache. The student who is deserving of the Determination and Character Award for the Orange Team demonstrated tremendous resolve and focus during their eighth grade year. This student has been described by their teachers as creative, humble, talented, respectful, driven, and kind. This student is always appreciative of the support of their teachers and classmates. This student had a tireless work ethic, never shied away from a challenge, and always went above and beyond teacher expectations. The 2018 Determination and Character Award for the Orange Team goes to Paige Marshall.
Albert Einstein once stated, most people say that it is intellect which, which makes a great scientist. They are wrong. It is character. As I reflected on my many, many talented scientists that I have taught throughout the school year, this quote remained on my mind and impacted my choice. The Orange Team candidate that is receiving the Science Award is a diligent, hard-working student who daily exhibits perseverance. Though quiet in nature, this student consistently takes risks to contribute to class discussion and makes an effort daily to achieve maximum learning. The student is kind, respectful, helpful, and serves as a role model in my classroom. I have been honored not only to teach this student in grade eight, but to have had the opportunity to teach this student in grade six. The academic growth as well as personal growth that this student has exhibited over the year has been phenomenal. Tonight I feel privileged and honored to acknowledge the achievements of Caitlin Dempsey. This year I had the privilege to teach a young woman who is hungry to learn and interested in everything. She is a voracious reader who loves writing fan fiction about her favorite books and films. She has said that she enjoys writing because she can manipulate some of her favorite characters into situations and stories she wants them to be in. And that she enjoys painting pictures with words. The 2018 Orange Team English Award goes to Grace Young. Throughout the entire course of the year, this Orange Team student, student was extremely diligent, focused, and most notably, humble. Every single day, he would arrive to class prepared and ready to tackle the tasks of our next lesson. Each morning, he was the first student to say good morning, and it brightened our day. When it came to the content, he often came up with intuitive and analytical follow-up questions and displayed his grasp of the material and demonstrated his passion to cultivate a well-developed understanding beyond what was required in class. As we came to know this student more, we began to understand that his motivations did not center merely on acquiring a good grade, but a desire to obtain knowledge and strengthen his writing skills and develop as a person and a student. In regards to this year's History Award, this student embodies everything we look for when selecting students for these honors. His diligence, passion, work ethic, and organization truly put his talent and ability on display in the classroom. The 2018 Orange Team History Award goes to Gabe O'Brien. Next, we have Mrs. Brennan with the Spanish Award. This student has shown tremendous growth this year in Spanish. She continues to work hard and never gives up, even when faced with obstacles. She frequently participates in class and is always excited to speak in the target language. She has consistently shown leadership qualities by working well with any student and helping them when they are struggling. Her classmates look up to her as a positive student, peer, and friend was respectful and hardworking. I am very proud of the risks that she has taken both inside and outside of the classroom. She is a true example of a student with grit. I know she will do great things next year at the high school. The 2017 eighth grade Spanish award for Senora Brenna's class goes to Claire Hood.
The white team will now present their awards. This year's Mathematics Award goes to a student who always goes above and beyond, driven by their own innate curiosity rather than the pursuit of just a good grade. Incidentally, this student has also maintained an A-plus average in the accelerated algebra class all year. This student asks insightful questions that extend the concepts that we learned in class to the next level. This student is a quiet leader that never boasts and is always willing to help her classmates. This year's Math Award goes to Celia Jenkins. Okay, Mrs. Brooks regrets that she can't be here tonight, so I'm presenting her award. The White Team Science Award is given to the student who has consistently gone above and beyond in all aspects of their coursework. This person has enthusiastically tackled all projects and challenges, maintained academic excellence throughout the year, demonstrated a passion and expertise for the subject, and has been the best exemplified the mind and habits of a scientist. The recipient of the 2018 White Team Science Award goes to Tyler Gordon. The eighth graders read many books and short stories this year, and unsurprisingly, one of their favorites is To Kill a Mockingbird, Harper Lee's classic. In this novel, Atticus teaches his children and everyone who reads the book the importance of integrity, respect, and empathy. He challenges his daughter, Scout, to be empathetic with those she meets because you never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. The winner of the White Team English Award is a young woman who has demonstrated her capacity for empathy by connecting deeply with the characters of the novels we read this, together this year, especially those in Mockingbird, who faced an unjust, intolerant, and unkind society. Literature, as a part of the humanities, asks us to reflect upon the value and responsibility of being human. In this student, I saw not only a true love for literature and writing, but the ability to look at life through the lens of literature and to take what she saw and pour it into mature and thoughtful reflection of life and its triumphs and trials. This year's English award goes to Melanie Cole. Where's the, where's the certificate? Oh. Mustering excitement to study history isn't always the easiest feat when you're 14 years old. But every year there are some students that just bring an easy enthusiasm and love for the subject to each class. As a teacher, if you're really lucky, a student might also teach you a thing or two. And if you're especially lucky, he or she might actually integrate some comedy into our daily study. I am grateful this year to have had a student who ticked off all of those boxes. I am proud to present this year's White Team History Award to Mr. Harrison Bograd. Unfortunately, Senora Johansson was not able to be with us tonight, so I am um, giving the Spanish award on her behalf. Learning a new language is tedious and hard work that can only be achieved with diligence and determination. This year's Foreign Language Award goes to a student 
who has demonstrated unwavering persistence and passion for the Spanish language. This young lady is always enthusiastic in class, making every possible effort to communicate in Spanish every chance she gets, even outside of class with classmates who are willing to listen and respond. Thank you so much for your passion and dedication this year. This year's Foreign Language Award goes to Grace Ford. Ms. Hicks for the Character and Determination Award. This next student had his first year at Hoppington Middle School this year. A Hoppington resident, he transferred from a small private school in Worcester and made a seamless transition to eighth grade at HMS. He impressed his teachers and classmates with his strong academic skill set and um, proved himself by being a finalist in the school-wide geography bee. Most importantly, he showed all of us how kind, caring, and hardworking he is. It is with great honor that I present the Character and Determination Award to Ryan Franklin. I am presenting on behalf of Mr. Masha, who is not here tonight. The White Team Determination and Character Award is presented to a student who exemplifies resolve within the classroom and courage in the face of adversity. Oh, it's another To Kill a Mockingbird reference, but I promise I didn't write this one. In To Kill a Mockingbird, a small town lawyer, Atticus Finch, explains to his children that a person's true character is revealed when faced a seemingly insurmountable task. He says, although the odds may seem overwhelming, you begin anyway and you see it through no matter what. Here, Finch is alluding to an upcoming trial he has taken on in the 1930s Jim Crow era South, which seems like a far cry compared to the lives of eighth graders at Hopkinton Middle School in 2018. However, we as teachers see determin determination and character each and every day in our classrooms. This year's recipient encompasses both of these traits every day and it has not gone unnoticed by her teachers. She takes challenges head on, shows perseverance and grit when times get tough, does the right thing even if it may not be the most popular thing to do, and always sees things through no matter what. It is my pleasure to present this year's White, Term, White Team Determination and Character Award to Ms. Hannah Hutchins. We will now have the green team to present their awards. The winner of this year's Green Team Science Award was a pleasure to have in class all year. The students showed consistent excellence in her work a genuine interest in the subject material and creativity in every project that she completed for me. I am so very proud to award the 2018 Green Team Science Award to Olivia Sward. Are you sensing a theme? I will also be playing the part of Mrs. Weiss tonight, who couldn't be with us. So, The recipient of the math award for the green team epitomizes what it means to be a good student. They have passion and a talent for math and are willing to share it with others. This student has gone above and beyond helping their peers. They are a resource for them and can always be found helping others in and outside of the classroom. They are always kind and respectful. They're able to think creatively and analytically about the subject matter, which is a rare find. 
I'm proud to present the 2018 Math Award for the Green Team to Sneha Jaswal. In the early 1980s, there was a long-running television ad for a national tabloid newspaper whose slogan was, Inquiring Minds Want to Know. Now, anybody my age or older would remember how annoying these ads are. But as irritating as they could be, the slogan really applies to the study of history. After all, history is all about inquiry, asking questions about who we once were in order to get an understanding of who we are now. This year I had several students with inquiring minds, but one student really had an amazing propensity for asking questions. Questions for which I did not have the answers. So of course I did what any teacher with over a dozen years experience would do. I moved his seat to the back of the room. I don't know, I figured maybe the further away from me he was physically, the less likely he would be to continue to ask those troublesome questions. But like John Wayne hurling a hand grenade in a war movie, this kid would simply pull the pin and lob his questions over everybody else's heads. I would often hesitate and then reply that that question would make a wonderful mini research project. And then I would go home and cry myself to sleep thinking about how little I knew about history. <laughs> Early on in the year, we actually discussed a possible daily limit to the number of questions that this student could raise it didn't take me long to understand why. Well, tonight, I would like to make clear that I am lifting any restrictions. I wholeheartedly encourage this young man to ask as many questions as he wants to his ninth grade history teacher. <laughs> because inquiring minds want to know. So the 2018 Green Team Award goes to Josh Krimgold. Poet, writer, scholar, and teacher Clint Smith said, this idea of shared humanity and the connections that we make with one another, that's what, in fact, makes life worth living. The student I chose for the Green Team English Award was able to make a personal connection to each book we read, in turn, see the connections present across the novels we read. Trouble. The Call of the Wild, To Kill a Mockingbird, A Midsummer's Night Dream, and The Pearl. Not only were the connections made to each book, but to our world. Each day, the student brought enthusiasm, curiosity, and passion to our class. The honor of the English Award for the Green Team goes to Owen Keefe. Learning a new language is enriching in so many ways, but one of my favorite things about teaching foreign language is the fun that's involved. Uh, it's something that every year expands upon my love of teaching French. Um, I love hearing students overcome their inhibitions to express their unique personalities in a new language, and I love witnessing students sharing jokes in French that only French speakers would understand, or singing our silly verb songs both inside and outside of the classroom. I was lucky enough to have many fun-loving and motivated students this year. One in particular, though, would consistently enter the classroom with a smile and a joke. She would translate song lyrics into French and happily share them out. Her fun-loving attitude and energy to learn were infectious to those around her, and I don't believe I've ever seen her in a bad mood. 
This particular student also has the good fortune to travel to France this summer. As adventurous and animated as she is, I'm sure this will be an enriching experience and wish her, wish her all the fun in the world. Uh, the Foreign Language Award for French goes to Shanze Khan. It is our choices that show what we truly are, far more than our abilities. Albus Dumbledore spoke these words to a young, impressionable wizard by the name of Harry Potter during a time of extreme adversity at Hogwarts Academy. Teaching my eighth grade students this year, I would often remind them that it is not whether you can or cannot do something, that is, there is some external being that controls what you are good at and what you are not good at. Rather, it is simply whether you choose to do something or choose not to do it. Whether you choose to spend that extra 30 minutes on IXL math problems. Whether you choose to speak up in class and bravely ask Mr. Hayes to clarify how the Black Death impacted history as we know it. Or whether you choose to help a classmate who has dropped his things in the hallway when you have other more pressing things to be concerned about, like getting to lunch. These seemingly small everyday choices define who you are. One individual who demonstrates the essential art of making meaningful choices and who shows determination to succeed despite challenges and adversity is this year's recipient of the 2018 Green Team Determination and Character Award, Subanje Shubes Kanal. <laughs> we'll now have the wellness department to present their awards. That's not going to work. A student who learns for the sake of learning. That's what comes to mind when I think about this student. Someone who shows up to class with a terrific attitude, ready to try anything that is thrown their way. Someone who always gives their best effort and asks questions. This student worked hard on every activity, including fitness testing, and took the lead in choreographing a group dance, and also put up with me for her entire middle school physical education career. My award for excellence in physical education goes to Tanisha Rajgore. Over the last three years, my awardees define excellence in physical education. This year, my award goes to two people that include everyone, show great sportsmanship, lead by example, and are always eager to learn. They also like to have fun and play hard. Uh, this year's Excellence in Physical Education Awards go to Sean Cahill and Sarah Furlong. One's character is often revealed through play. I've enjoyed working with these two students over the last three years and watching their character shine. They both have many gifts and talents, and also they value health and wellness. I have seen them try their best, be good teammates, help others, and play in the spirit of the game, no matter the sport or activity. Emerson once said, it is a happy talent to know how to play. I'm pleased to give my award to two very talented individuals, Owen Schnorr and Katie Callery.
Every year it's difficult to pick students for this award because there are so many fabulous students here at Hopkinton. When I thought back over the last three years, two students stood out above the others. The first student has continually impressed me with her level of maturity since the sixth grade. She has shown strength in her character through and through. She is conscientious, hardworking, enthusiastic, curious, attentive, and respectful. She always came to class with a smile and a positive attitude. She's a role model to her peers. I'd like to give one award to Johanna Nathman. My second student has always been a pleasure to have as a student these past three years. I've enjoyed his inquisitive, inquisitiveness, his positivity, and every time we have class, he always adds insight into our class discussions with his thoughtful questions and comments. I'd like to also give an award to um, the uh, Wellness Award this year to Adam Huntington. The Music and Drama Awards will now pe be presented. Although I have been at HMS since October, I did not have the pleasure of meeting the student until January of this year. This student, with their soft-spoken and kind personality, doesn't come off as a typical dramatic person. But when this actor performs, they truly light up the stage. To me, drama is a communal art. And this student knows exactly what it means to be part of a team. Their leadership skills, motivational speeches, and dedication to my first production at HMS, and their last, makes the student deservant of this award. Not only did the student shine in our spring musical, but they also shine in the classroom. I can always count on this person to be patient and kind with others, serve as a positive role model for his peers, and stay an extra minute to help clean up after class. I cannot wait to see you perform on the high school stage next year. This award goes to Sean Walker. This year's eighth grade has had an exceptional year, and I feel blessed to say that this year's decision was even tougher than usual. The chorus has been working as a strong team for three years, and the students receiving the Excellence in Chorus Award are fantastic examples of many truly stunning students this year. Both of these students have been working as true leaders throughout their time in chorus, are always prepared, singing with full voice, helping others to improve and stay focused, and are always striving to be their best selves both vocally and personally. One of these students was known in a good way as our chorus parliamentarian, always keeping order and focus back when he was younger and now consistently leads by example with just the occasional shush, which never fails to make me smile as it did today. Our other recipient has such a strong personality and leadership that she has helped even my long-term substitute during every class with warm-ups, focus, or whatever was needed. These two students could not be more deserving of this award. I would truly like to thank the entire eighth grade chorus, as well as Luciano Duca and Maddie Luce. I have a unique position in this district where I have the opportunity to meet these students way down in fifth grade at the Hopkins School. I'm sure many of you in the audience can remember those unique sounds that were produced in the first weeks of September and October. The first concert was a fantastic combination of jingle bells and four measure lines from our method book. After that, they persisted, they practiced, and they got better. My first award goes to a student that began on violin and showed an immediate bond with it. I learned that she was also a talented piano player, and in sixth grade we had her play with the orchestra on piano as well as violin. 
While she was doing violin and piano, she also decided to add cello lessons into the mix. In seventh grade, she switched over to cello and once again took to her new instrument as if she had been playing for years. She spent her summer at Interlochen Music Camp, started playing in the David French Orchestra, and successfully auditioned for the Junior Central District Orchestra in both her seventh and eighth grade years. She has been a consistent leader in both her positive, do-anything-to-help attitude, as well as her fantastic cello playing. Heading to the high school, she has already signed up for the New Hampshire Astafall Festival Orchestra, which will take pr place in this October at UNH and has her sights set on senior central districts. I look forward to watching her go above and beyond in high school. My first orchestra, oh my, sorry, my second orchestra award is going to a student that embodies the ideal of a bass player in every sense of the word. He started on cello in fifth grade, and once we determined that his parents had a car big enough to fit a monster-sized instrument, he switched over to the bass and has never looked back. He has worked with Mr. Purdy in the middle school jazz ensemble for the past two years and has successfully auditioned to be a part of the high school's top-level jazz ensemble as a freshman, which is a unique and wonderful opportunity for him. I can honestly say that I have never had a student like him and can truly say that he has had a lasting impression on my teaching and the orchestra program as a whole. I leave him with this advice, never stop playing. This year's orchestra awards go to Carly Osman and Sean Thappa. The person that I have chosen for the General Music Award is Katie Scherfius. Katie couldn't be here tonight, so I felt no need in holding the suspense. In the three years I have gotten to know Katie, I have found her to be a soft-spoken, yet strong-willed young lady with a quest for knowledge. Katie has a passion for history, an inspiring sense of values, and an undeniable talent for writing and art. One of the last assignments given to my eighth grade general music students is to write a paragraph reflection on a current musician that is the voice of the younger generation and express why. Katie's short paragraph impressed me and inspired me, and because she couldn't be here tonight in person, I thought it would be appropriate to share her words with all of you. Music has always been an important medium to humankind. Long before reading or writing became useful to all, long before the internet allowed us to express our opinions, there was music. There were triumphant melodies, pensive symphonies, tender sounds resonating from concert halls and palaces. Indeed, music was our way of expressing our emotions and opinions since the early days of human life. But music's impact on our lives has faded over time. We used to have artists that spoke the opinions and ideals of their generation, but this generation doesn't have a John Lennon, a Bob Dylan, or a James Brown. We don't have someone to rise to, to fame for us anymore. Now that we have the internet and all the pages relying on it, we can easily and quickly express our opinions. Thousands of people will see it in a few minutes, allowing us powers of communication that we couldn't dream of 30 years ago, powers that we couldn't dream of even at the invention of the World Wide Web. We have influential and beloved musicians, but now, thanks to quick and easy communication, our generation speaks for itself, and it has a loud voice. Katie Scherfis. Good evening. This eighth grade band has been a very interesting bunch of students. More than anything, this has been a group that truly enjoyed the band experience and has embraced the idea of the ensemble rather than the individual. That being said, there are always some students, though, through their actions, demonstrate leadership qualities. Our band award recipients have demonstrated perseverance and a great attention to detail, not just in preparing their music, but with their desire to better the ensemble in whatever way they can. It is my pleasure to award this year's band awards to Kira Sward and Alan Wang. We'll now have the Related Arts Awards presented.
I'll be presenting Mrs. Wellinger's award because she could not be here tonight. The recipient of this year's art award was selected because virtually every piece of artwork that he created during his three years at HMS has been highly memorable and exciting in some way. He constantly challenges himself in sixth grade to draw the canals of Venice in one point perspective, in seventh grade to create a turtle mola worth of a nomination for the Scholastic Art Awards, and in eighth grade in the creation of his sports-themed school design. More than anything, though, it is the excitement with which he creates his work, often crafting until the very last possible moment of class. I believe he is motivated by an excitement about the power of making art rather than the grade or any recognition, but he certainly deserves that tonight. I am happy to present this award, award on behalf of Mrs. Wollinger to Danny Villani. Oh, Danny. The award for dynamic media goes to a student who has, all three years at the middle school, consistently taken advantage of our digital media to create artwork that is striking, personal, and original. He is not afraid to challenge himself with both tools and concepts. He has a unique way of looking at the world that sparks curiosity in viewers. He works diligently, unafraid to revise and refine his work until he arrives at a finished, polished product. He has consistently impressed me each year that I've had the pleasure of teaching him. Congratulations to Brendan Regan on a fantastic three years. This student shared with me her love of building things and her genuine interest in the subject matter. She excelled during our, unit, during our programming unit in robotics and demonstrated excellent insight by incorporating compound gearing into her drag racer project. This student deserves recognition for her positivity and determination throughout all the engineering courses. The 2018 Engineering Award goes to Sophia Luce. The Media Literacy Award goes to a student who has shown creativity, empathy, and thoughtfulness while exploring how media impacts our sense of ourselves and the world. This student has an ability to eloquently articulate her ideas in a way that encourages her peers to dig deeper and question their own beliefs and understandings. This student has consistently shown a willingness to think critically about her own relationship to media and is wise beyond her years. She demonstrates kindness and poise both inside and outside of the classroom. The 2018 Media Literacy Award goes to Fiona Medeiros. The Library Award goes to a student who took full advantage of our library during her three years with us. Her pleasant demeanor, especially apparent during daily morning visits, underscored her genuine passion about reading. Her frequent visits usually resulted in her taking out armfuls of books at a time. Somewhere in those three years, I even taught her how to check out her own books so that she could help me out when I was busy with other students or away from my desk. Therefore, it's with great pleasure and a great honor that I offer the 2018 Library Award to Mary Billiter. Congratulations, Mary. We will now have the Student Spotlight Award be presented.
I am pleased to be highlighting one eighth grade student for our HMS Student Spotlight Award. At Hopkinton Middle School, each team recognizes and highlights two of their students publicly in the display case across from the main office. These students are kind to others, have achieved to their fullest potential, have improved dramatically in some area as a student, and or some other recognizable reasons. Tonight, we would like to put an even greater, brighter spotlight on one of these 30 plus eighth graders. Before calling this student up to receive tonight's award, let me read what his teachers shared with the HMS community in that display case. He was new to HMS and had done nothing but to impress his teachers and support his peers. He is an enthusiastic learner who actively participates in class and puts his best effort forward every day. He is eager to help his classmates with anything they might need and make sure to include each student in group activities. Outside of school, he enjoys hockey and fishing and we know his team is lucky to have such a star player. I have seen the same and heard more praise from his teachers throughout the spring. We had a meeting with his mom recently. As we went around the table from teacher to teacher, I heard that he is always lending a helping hand to others. He understands his strengths and weaknesses as a student. He seems like he has been at HMS for three years and he's only been here for grade eight. He made a fantastic tradition to our school and has continued to do well all year. His teachers and I are so happy he became a Hiller. We wish him great success in high school and expect good things the next four years and beyond. Congratulations, Owen Panos, for being the brightest spotlight student. And now the Best Buddies Award will be presented. Jim Casey couldn't be here tonight, so I'll be presenting the Best Buddies Award for him. For the past 11 years, we have had the opportunity to witness the Best Buddies program grow from a handful of students to a thriving program that provides social and community service opportunities for all of our HMS students. This year's Best Buddies Award goes to a student who has been part of the program for the last two years. His positivity, enthusiasm, and smiling face are fixtures at Best Buddies. He exemplifies what it means to be a friend and a, and a positive community member. He is kind, caring, supportive, and inclusive. He always brings energy and enthusiasm to the group. We will miss having him as part of our program, but know the high school will be gaining a valuable member for, of their amazing chapter. This year's Best Buddies Award goes to Chase Dixon. And now the Women's Club Endeavor Award will be presented. Thank you for inviting me here tonight to present the Hopkinton Women's Club Middle School Endeavor Award. The Hopkinton Women's Club mission is to promote social and educational culture among its members and to provide service to the community. One of our goals is to reach out to members of the Hopkinton community of all ages. The Middle School Endeavor Award is a relatively new award given to an eighth grade student who has demonstrated resiliency, determination, and an earnest effort to overcome challenges. We work with the school counselors who nominate the individual most deserving of this award. The award comes with a certificate, the student's name on a plaque, which will be proudly displayed in the school, and a check for $100. It gives me great pleasure to announce this year's recipient. He has been the definition of perseverance his entire life. Through multiple surgeries and frequent moves, this student has never lost his positive outlook or asked to be treated differently. Instead, he has become a valued member of our school community by demonstrating grit, determination, and a smile that can light up the room. The Hopkinton Middle School community has become a better place by having this student as part of the community. It gives me great pleasure to present this year's Middle School Endeavor Award to Will Amundsen.
Oh. I don't know him, so is this him? Is that him? And now the administration will present their awards, starting with Mrs. Ben Benick. Thank you. The Shane DeRoche Memorial Award is a very special honor. The award goes to a student who, like Shane, is respected by many and creates positive energy everywhere she goes. This student has a unique quirky sense of humor and a different perspective in class. She is kind, approachable, and a friend to all. This year's Shane DeRoche Memorial Award recipient is Vania Gautam. The D Dave Laquadera was a volunteer at our school who came in to work in the office after school hours. He was a real gentleman who was welcoming to our entire community. He was a generous individual who always looked for ways to quietly help anyone in need, especially our students. Just like the recipient of this award, Dave had an excellent sense of humor, was always positive and kind to all, put others before himself, volunteered his time, is humble and well-liked by peers and staff. The recipient of the Dave Laquadera who embodies these qualities is Eldon Rossi. Tonight we are recognizing a student for his presence in our school which helps to create a sense of community among peers, classmates, teachers, and staff. The recipient of this award was nominated by all his teachers and school counsel. counselor. Of special note was that despite being new to HMS as an eighth grader, he easily and quickly became part of our HMS community, displaying respect, camaraderie, and trust. Our school community award goes to Michael Berman. And now the School Spirit Award will be presented by Mrs. Lape. This year's School Spirit Award goes to an individual who always embodies the idea of the Hiller spirit. She's wonderfully kind, enthusiastic, and an overall fun person to be around. This year, she ran track and played field hockey, and she was so proud to be a member of both of these teams. She brings dressing up for Student Council Spirit Days to the next level, and all of us who know her are lucky to have her in our lives. It's my pleasure to give this year's School Spirit Award to Kelsey Carlson. At this time, we'd like to also recognize three students who were the recipients of state-level awards handed out earlier this year. Project 351 is a service program named for the 351 cities and towns in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Students from across the state participate in both leadership development as well as community service starting at a kickoff of a year of service in Boston in January. This year's Ambassador of Hopkinton was chosen for her exemplary ethic of service, kindness, compassion, humility, and gratitude. Please join me in congratulating Marina Youssef on this wonderful accomplishment. Marina, please stand. Congratulations. Each year, the New England League of Middle Schools invites schools from all over the region to nominate two eighth grade students to be named as scholar leaders. 
These students are formally recognized at an event in May for their outstanding academic achievement, service to classmates, and the integrity, honesty, self-discipline, and courage that they show on a daily basis. This year's nominees are dependable, well-organized, and responsible. They exemplify positive attitudes, and they inspire positive behavior in others. Finally, these two students have contributed a great deal to the civic life of Hopkinton Middle School through their leadership in both classrooms and school activities. I'd like to ask the following two students to stand in recognition. Congratulations, Celia Jenkins and Will Davies. And now we have the Principal's Award, presented by Mr. Keller. The Principal's Award goes to the student who has made a significant, lasting, positive impact on our school through leadership, determination, and the ability to work with others. This person also typically gets the prize that is wrapped the poorest. However, this year, Ms. Lape uh, let me borrow some wrapping paper, so uh, this person should look forward to this gift. This student that is receiving this year's Principal's Award is confident, polite, hardworking, diligent, reliable, positive, motivated, and also has a great sense of humor and is a wonderful role model for us all. The Principal's Award winner is a quiet leader with a keen sense of the time to share and the time to listen. It's someone who has established convictions, is an advocate for self and others. This student brings a positive energy to every setting, whether this be as an Ignite mentor, a peer tutor, or a member of our school council, regularly speaking as passionately, wisely, and thoughtfully as teachers and parents. Recently, this student was overheard in the hallway during an interaction with her younger brother, during which he approached her and said, I love you. Most of us in this situation would probably ignore this statement, worried about what others might say. Some of us might even tell our younger brother to get away. Tonight's principal award recipient replied, I love you too. This year's Principal's Award goes to Grace Young. And now for the distribution of grade eight certificates led by Mr. Vera, I welcome Mr. Vera. Thank you. As we set up for the first homeroom to receive their awards, uh, we stood up at this microphone telling the high school and expressing to them what a great class they were going to get. The seniors this, this year graduated uh, were a fantastic group, and uh, the high school staff are very sad to, to lose them. Uh, but I've assured them they are getting uh, a replacement class um, as quality as the one that left or better. So it's good to know the high school is going to be in good hands the next four years. So starting with Mrs. Noble in her homeroom. Aya Baba. Mary Billiter. Katie Callery. Miles Canty. Devin Donnelly. Rowan Gould. Mackenzie Holmes. Sophia Luce. Ava Perlov. Emily Faley Bobbin. Cole Rodriguez. Eldon Rossi. Henry Wilgum. Ken Wan. Ava Whalen. 
Marina Youssef. Now presenting certificates to Mrs. McLean's homeroom. Manoli Barris. Hunter Bertucci Bissonette. Sarah Bouvier. Michaela Coffey. Jacob Dugas Costa. Lydia Ellenwood. Banya Gotham. Tora Ito. Mayher Carr. Shanze Khan. Sam Lagoy. Evan Packer. Kasi Shamel. Emma Steer. Sean Walker. Riley Walsh. Maeve Watson. Tess Weatherhead. And now, Mrs. Abate's homeroom. Josh Blaingard. <laughs> Ava Bauman. Kelsey Carlson. Griffin Curtin. Chase Dixon. Daniel Dunn. Ryan Franklin. Kiera Green. Jack Hudson. Bianca Powell. Kate Powers. Rowan Price. Aryan Shah, Lee Sutherland, Emma Torgerson, David Urowitz, Mrs. Brooks Homeroom, Harrison Bograd. Matthew Berdoulis, Sean Cahill, Gabby Siri, Claire Colvin, Charlie Cooper, Kiki Fossbender, Audrey Gilpin, Cyrus Hansen, Elizabeth Liu, Connor Lombard, Alexis Manchester, Leah Patrick, Brendan Regan, Marco Saez. Anshu Velour, Hope Vidal, Marissa Walsh,
Mrs. Johansson's home room, Brandon Belmonte. <laughs> Melanie Cole. Ryan Dialeva. Grace Ford. Samantha Galanik. Lucas Gamal. Tyler Gordon. Hannah Hutchins. Avery Hutchinson. Alexandra McNamee. Shrika Ravi. Jonathan Sunberg. Cindy Yang. Mr. O'Connell's homeroom, Will Amundsen. <laughs> Trinity Bertwistle. <laughs> Anthony Bulos. <laughs> Olivia Bradley. <laughs> Dylan Brand. Lauren Cochio. <laughs> Faye Desmond. <laughs> Kate Dion. <laughs> Lauren Galbwax. <laughs> Adam Huntington. <laughs> Seb Losada. <laughs> Connor Maloney. Jenny Rock, Paige Sanderson, Deeksha Vidayanathan, Alan Wang, Kevin Wang, Mrs. Weiss's homeroom, Kathleen Beauvais, Morgan Berenson, Rowan Buck, Shivali Chandrasekhar, Kara Dayun, Jack Dolsky. Snea Jaswal, <laughs> Owen Keefe, <laughs> Shubanje Kanal, <laughs> Morgan McAuliff, <laughs> Emily Miller, <laughs> Scott Payuka, <laughs> Shreya. Sharetti, Sean Thapa, Ashley Thomas, Hamankit Valarapale, Josie Ziegler, Mr. Hayes' homeroom, Michael Berman, <laughs> JJ Bianchi, <laughs> Ashley Butler, <laughs> Juliana Cedia, <laughs> Audrey Clayton, <laughs> Lucas Dion, <laughs> Motez Elgobri. 
Victoria Fisher. Owen Flanagan. Christina Gomez. Josh Krimgold. Owen McDonald. Rachel Miniman. Hayden Orenstein. Tanisha Rajgore. Elizabeth Schneider. Madeline Ullman. Jacob Waxman. Mrs. Grady and Ms. Hiles Homeroom, Victoria Allen, Deidre Belger, Aiden Chen, Luciano Duca, Michaela Grady, Joshua Huang, Ryan Kalen, Nate Casper, Catherine Layton, Arcadia McDonald, Megan O'Connor, Nate Petrie, Caleb Raham. Olivia Sword, Danny Valani, Miss Powers Homeroom, Lillian Buckley. Mike Burney, Quinn Comiskey, Amy Cox, Will Davies, Tyler Fallon, Pierce Farrell, Sarah Furlong, Emily Jurassic, Liam Cohen, Alex Kimball, Riley Clattenmaker, Lisa Lewandowski, Abby Lucier, Zach Marlowe. Katrina Proventure, Alex Smith, Ashlyn Sullivan, Mrs. Masha and Mrs. Stevenson's homeroom, Charlotte Chevery. Ryan Demore, Abellis Damian, Riley Finnegan, Melanie Gilday, Michael Hyman, Simran Kaur. Jake LaCoach, Paige Marshall, Tommy McAuliffe, Sean McGrail, 
Fiona Medeiros. Johanna Nathman. Owen Panos. Ashley Pepin. Jack Petruni. Alexis Trendell. Mrs. McDeed's home room. Charlotte Can. Matt Kaufman. Kyla Crum. Sai Gutampate. Grace Joy. Emily LePage. James Muzzy. Carly Osman. Nick Paharik. Vinny Papora. Sam Shere. Sam Streche. Ashley Tommaso. Nick Torres. Nicholas Wheeler, Aaron Yenowin, Miss Snyder's homeroom, Grace Agababian, Lauren Cho, Margaret Clements. Kira Cross, Rachel Durand, Nikki Gonzalez, Carly Hedstrom, Aiden Kelly, Griffin Kelly, Madison Luce, Kylie. Pondian, John V. Prudivy, Shreya Ravi, Owen Schnur, Nathaniel Siegfried, Kyler Spar, John Waters. T.J. Whedon, Mrs. Olds and Mr. Montgomery's homeroom, Alec Brooks, Caitlin Dempsey, Anish Doki, Alina Donoyan. Brooke Doherty, Andrew Gaughan, Haley Glassburn, Connor Grady, Claire Hood, Jesse Ionelli, Bridget LaCroix, Emma Lucy, Callie Moore, Gabe O'Brien, Madeline Scannell, Kira Sword, Mrs. Brennan's homeroom, Michael Ambrosoni. Natalie Bates, Andrew Beck, Chloe Chella, Cal Greenwood, K. 
Kevin Gu. Sean Haley. Spencer Horgan. Anwen Huang. Celia Jenkins. Megan Joyce. Somia Kothakian. Megan McCarran. Achita Nemalakanti. Austin Whaley. Grace Young. And there you have it, this year's uh, HMS eighth grade class, soon to be ninth graders. This year's eighth graders are not only taller now, than they were when they arrived in sixth grade, but they have grown academically, socially, and emotionally as well. They were asked in their English classes to reflect upon the many lessons they learned during their time at HMS. Tonight we will hear from a few students to tell us about the wisdom that th they have gained. At this time, we ask Aaron Yenowin, An Wen Wong, Tori Fisher, Kevin Wang, Mahir Carr, and Emma Steer to share their wisdom. Throughout my three years at the middle school, I have grown in many ways as an individual, and I feel we have grown as a class as well. One of the most important lessons I have learned is to surround yourself with people who will allow you to be an authentic, true version of yourself. Over the time I have spent in this school, I have gained many important friends that I constantly find myself having fun with. They allow me to be the person I want to be and are willing to try out new things with me. In middle school, everyone is trying to figure out what they want to do in life and how they are supposed to go about doing that. It is vital to have people around you that are willing to try out new activities with you and have fun doing so. I have found that group, and although some may not have found theirs yet, the adventures in middle school have helped so many begin to write their own story. I have been able to develop and grow during my time here, and this has been mainly because of the people I chose to spend my time with and the opportunities that we have taken together. Throughout life, the people you spend time with can determine the type of person you are and what you do with your own life. So it is crucial to spend that time with those who will help you find your own path. Thank you. One of the most important lessons I have ever learned in middle school is to focus on the now instead of focusing on the future or the past. I realized that no matter how embarrassing something is or how bad something is, you can't dwell on it. This upsetting situation has already passed and you can't change it. You can only think about what you can change moving forward and do your best. That's all you can do. I came to this conclusion when I couldn't stop thinking about a poor grade I received. I thought to myself that doing this wouldn't get me anywhere, so I took action. Instead of ruminating on it, I asked my teacher for extra credit and what I could do to improve my grade. After that one in incident, I realized how many other ways I could better situations instead of whining and dwelling on them. With this way of thinking, I can always improve, such as in my grades, playing cello, and many other aspects of my life. I can use this experience to do better in high school, college, and beyond. HMS is such a forgiving environment, and even though not everyone you meet will be as forgiving, you can do your best to forgive others, and most importantly, forgive yourself. Through the course of my middle school career, I have learned many life lessons. Whether it was through the good times or the bad, the last three years have certainly taught me a lot. Middle school is a time where many students are given the opportunity to find themselves and figure out who they want to be. 
However, there are often difficult times in the process. Through the good and the bad in every situation, things are done to try to remedy the issue, but they're not always successful. There comes a time when you just cannot do any more to help. Every aspect of the situation has been considered, but it still has not resolved the conflict. This can occur from academics to relationships to athletics, and is applicable in almost any situation, especially middle school. When these situations arise, you begin to question yourself. Do I want to keep going or let it go? From youth to college years to working a job, there will always be a point where you've tried your best and done all you can. Learning this lesson through the course of my middle school career was not an easy thing to do, yet it was extremely helpful. I've used this idea in my daily life from athletics to academics to relationships, etc. Knowing that I have tried my best and that sometimes there is nothing left to do has greatly helped me to accomplish the important things in my life. Thank you. In these three years, if I have learned anything, I have learned to not doubt yourself, to stop questioning your actions and to ignore what other people think. Now that might sound like a cliche, but bear with me here. One thing I already knew coming into middle school is that nothing good can come from being overconfident, which is true to an extent. Being too confident can lead to mistakes, and when not if you make those mistakes, your self-confidence can take a huge hit. So I took a more reserved approach. I was quiet and shy. I thought about every action I made and every word that I said. I thought that if I, I thought about every, uh, I thought that if I carefully considered everything I said and did, I wouldn't make any mistakes. Well, I was wrong. During a point in seventh grade, something changed. From that point on, I started to put myself out there. I started to get to know more people and make new friends. By putting myself out there, by letting more people know who I am, by taking a risk and not doubting myself, I made more friends. I realized that by doubting yourself, you are forcing yourself to become someone who you are not. Who you are is your personality and your abilities. And if you doubt those abilities, you lose some meaning of who you are. So stop doubting yourself. Stop saying, I can't. Stop saying, I'm not as smart as the person next to me. We are all smart, just some of us choose to embrace it, and some of us doubt it. All of you are smart and kind and wonderful human beings. Don't doubt that. One life lesson that I learned in my middle school years that I will never forget is the importance of having a growth mindset. People often give up trying to do something that doesn't come to them quickly, or they believe that you have to be naturally gifted at something to succeed in the area. I was like this at one point in middle school. There was a time where I was just not good at math. I really wanted to be good at math, but for some reason, I just did not understand it, and all my classmates would be solving math problems easily. My dad noticed this, and we set up a plan, which I wasn't exactly a fan of, but I'm glad we did, where we would get up at 5 in the morning on school days, to just do math for an hour and build up upon my skills. Over time, my scores in math had kept getting better and better, and people would often come to me for help on math problems. I was placed in the highest math levels for seventh and eighth grade. This isn't a hard work life lesson though. What I gained from this experience was learning that you can do anything that you set your mind to, and no one comes out of the womb knowing how to graph parabolas. I will keep this in mind when life puts mountains in my way in the future, and when I think that I can't get over the mountain. Learning the growth mindset helped me to become more motivated and turning the I can't into the I can, and I'm glad that I learned this at a young age. A wonderful lesson that I have learned throughout my years of the middle school is that you need to explore different options. Imagine a world where people dress the same, act the same, and think the same. How boring would that be? Unfortunately, some people act like they can only follow a single path. This path that they blindly follow is narrow, going only in one direction, and is paved flawlessly. I'm here to tell you that this path actually has many paths attached to it. Some go sideways, some are full of bumps and hills, and some are impressed with potholes. These paths have been developing and changing throughout the ages. These are the paths I walk on now. This lesson will prepare me for what is yet to come by showing me that even if my parents or friends go one way and become successful, I can pick a different route and be just as good. I do not have to be something just because others are doing it. I can also create a new path whenever I desire. In conclusion, our world would be nothing without directions, options, and choices. All it takes is to be all it takes to be unique is straying from the paved road and having an adventure. Thank you, everyone.
At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce our grade eight cello trio, Anwen Huang, Carly Osmond, and Emily Miller. That was lovely, thank you.
parents, family and friends, guests, Dr. Kavanaugh, members of school committee, and of course, the reason why we are all here tonight, grade eight students. Before I begin, I would like to thank and acknowledge the efforts and time of Carrie Connor, Ann Ben Benick, Rita Balboa, Lori McBride, Pat Allen, Danielle Pepin, Nicole Misick, Jen Kelly, Karen Fallon, and Aaron Graziano in making tonight happen. <clears throat> thank you as well to Dave Purdy, Jeremy Dodge, Craig Hay, Lisa Conant, and Cat O'Toole, Cat O'Toole for our outstanding grade seven band for the, their accompaniment tonight. Sorry, Lisa Nielsen, it's taking me so long. I'd also like to thank the high school administration for hosting us tonight, the middle school custodians for tonight's setup, and Jim Cousins and H Camp for their AV support, live streaming, and pretty much everything that they do. So one life lesson that I've learned in doing this for many years is to write two speeches. Um, my first speech was a 25-minute compare and contrast of Maycomb County and Hopkinton. But I feel like we've talked a lot about To Kill a Mockingbird tonight. So I'm going to go to uh, speech B, which is a little shorter than that. So this journey that is so descriptively entitled middle school comes to an end for you tomorrow at 1045. And you will leave us as different individuals than you were when you entered HMS. You are taller, smarter, louder. Beyond the obvious, though, let's consider all the changes ushered into HMS that you helped us improve upon. As you know, part of your welcome to HMS included brand new Chromebooks. Doesn't that feel like so long ago that we met you in August, delivering to each of you brand new Chromebooks and a slice of pizza or two or three? In that first year, you shared with us that you felt as though your teachers were hardly using the Chromebooks. Contrast that with a parent orientation a few weeks back where a grade six student told parents that students never look away from their screens inside the school. Last year, we called upon you for the infamous backpack pilot, where we attempted to determine if students carrying around backpacks throughout HMS would make transitions to and from classes more efficient. As you know, in the end, we stopped the experiment. One of the best pieces of feedback we received from you stated, students carrying every possession on their back makes for, and I quote, utter madness. Your class was also the first to arrive with a brand new courtyard, experiencing it during classes, parties, and lunch. Although we never approved the many requests that you sent us to use it as a cut through from the science wing, if we do, you'll be the first to access it. Those were just a few of the things that changed in your time at HMS. There's also something that did not change, and this is equally important. Those of you that came here from Hopkins were described to us as an awesome and talented group of students, socially, academically, artistically, athletically, and so on. And those teachers were so right. From the moment you arrived here, you've been respectful, fun, smart, engaged, kind, helpful, supportive, the whole package. I witnessed students who came from other towns or other schools that were welcomed and quickly and lovingly integrated into the class. You heard about several of them tonight. Like it or not, groups develop identities, and yours is no exception. Your class will forever be known at HMS as one of our finest. I look forward to hearing how you continue to build upon this legacy as you begin high school and go beyond. You treat one another, your teachers, all of us, with respect, with curiosity, and with humor. Thank you for making HMS a better place during this adventure. Congratulations, class of 2022. At this time, we'll send it up to the studio. Hello, Hopkinton Middle School, and welcome to a special edition of HMS Today. I'm your host, Michael Hyman. This evening, your favorite HMS TV reporter, Manoli Barris, will report out one final time for HMS TV. Manoli? Hello, fellow 8th grade students. Tonight, I want to take a moment to walk down memory lane and ask you to reflect on your time here. We've had lots of experiences, and I've made many memories over the last three years. It's been quite a journey together, from Nature's Classroom to Kimball's Farm, and most recently, New York. 
in between have shared all school cookouts, rip dub, Olympics, and a dance off in PE. We've taken hundreds of tests, that's for sure, eaten hundreds of lunches together, and have grown, learned, and matured together. Some more than others, but hey, don't worry, we'll all get there. As we say goodbye to our middle school years, I thank you for watching HMS today. And thank you for being interviewed, sharing your club highlights, fundraisers, and for allowing us to film you in action. Your participation is what makes HMS TV and HMS fantastic. So for one final time, this is Manoli Barris on behalf of everyone here in HMS TV, saying goodnight Hopkins Middle School and hello Hopkins High School. Now get out there and study hard. Thank you for that walk down memory lane, Manoli. Good night, Hockington Middle School. We'll see you in high school. And get out there and study hard. I just screwed up, so I'm out. Too late. <laughs> yeah. Groaned, learned. Is groaned even a word? Is that for sure? I'm interviewed, sharing, and... Oh, yeah, it, was, it was good. I don't know what that is. This. And I've made many. <laughs> Ooh. My lord. of 2022 to process out of the field house and into the cafeteria.